Okay, guys, we're here with uh, defensive coordinator and inside linebackers coach Peter Sermon. Go ahead and put questions in the chat and I'll call upon you. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started with Rusty Simmons from the San Francisco Chronicle. Hey, Coach, I was just going to ask, um, I don't even know if this is something down your alley, but but probability of playing this weekend, what are you guys hearing um, updating from yesterday? Well, unfortunately, this is going to be a canned line here for, for any uh, questions regarding that. Um, those all go to J-Dub. Those all go to Coach Wilcox. So um, our job as assistants are to get the kids and get the plan uh, ready to go. So we're – we are in uh, preparation mode as a staff, just finished our third down and red zone plan this morning um, and actually took a little break right now to be with you guys and uh, with script and practice. That's exactly what I was going to ask you next is, is how you do go about planning when you don't know exactly who's going to be available and those kind of things. Well, the thing about football coaches, uh, we get into routine and, uh, you know, for good or bad, um, you stay locked into that routine. Uh, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. You just kind of work backwards from when your game is and you're either three out from the game or four out from the game or five out from the game. Uh, you look at the practice schedule that you have. And, and uh, today we got a couple service periods, um, good seven, uh, seven on seven uh, versus Cal and then some teach periods. So you populate that and you get your kids ready to go and, and uh, you just stay you stay scheduled and you just kind of stay, stay focused on, uh, on what the traditional week looks like. And last thing I was going to ask, the players have already been through so much in 2020. How, how are they handling kind of this latest episode of everything that's going on? Our kids have been great, you know, and, and uh, what I find, Rusty, sometimes I, I kind of project the way I would feel onto our players. And uh, I don't think that's fair. I think our, our kids are resilient. Um, you know, and I think, uh, you know, as a staff and, you know, as a program, we need to treat them, you know, they're, they're tough minded, resilient kids and, uh, you know, have an empathy for them, I think is appropriate, uh, but telling them, Hey, I feel bad for you. Uh, I, I don't know what that accomplishes. You know, there's, there's been significant disappointment, um, you know, for through our whole, our whole country. And, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunately, uh, where we're at right now. And, and I think to, to keep battling forward and, and to demonstrate resiliency as a, as a person, I think is a, is a quality we're all working on. Right on. Thanks coach. Yep. Okay. We'll go to Jake Curtis from Cal sports report. Yeah, Peter, are, are you looking at players from different positions, positions they're not familiar with to put in a position where you might be needed because the players are not available? You know, that's a good question. We're always looking at, at, at player flexibility. Um, you know, in, in this particular situation, it, uh, it lends itself to being uh, extremely challenging. Uh, you know, we have, we have discussed that. Um, but at the same time, with, uh, with numbers being down, um, honestly, we're, we're battling to, to keep it too deep and, uh, you know, to keep guys uh, safe and healthy and, and continue to get ready for a game. Is everybody who might play on Saturday available to practice? Well, I think it's pretty well documented. We got a significant amount of guys in quarantine. So those guys are obviously unavailable to practice right now. Okay. And, and just, just to expand a little bit on what I asked in the first place. So you have guys that are not playing a position that they typically play in order to prepare for the, an eventuality. Say that again. <laughs> you have guys who are playing a, a position that they don't normally play in order to be prepared for an eventuality of needing a person at a position that they don't normally play. We have not gone through a wholesale change of moving positions uh, okay. of, you know, uh, of moving. I'm, I'm sure you're uh, of guys moving into position. We have not gone through a wholesale change of that. Um, we are in in the way we were preparing is uh, in the eventuality of getting the, the quarantine players back to play their natural positions and when they've been trained to play. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Trace Travers from Rivals. Yeah, I did notice when you guys put out a depth chart yesterday, you moved Eric Nisich back to your side of the ball. Uh, what was kind of the, I mean, I think we can kind of understand the impetus behind that change, but what does he do well on the defensive line? 
You know, we were very uh, optimistic uh, with Eric. You know, he had spent time with us on the defensive line before, and that's what made him a, um, a candidate to come on back and, and join us. Uh, he's athletic. He bends extremely well for a man his size, and, and uh, he's got heavy hands. You know, he's, he does a good job of striking blocks. Um, AB will continue to, to, to train him, but uh, he's, a, he's a bright, thoughtful, uh, hardworking guy, and, and he, has, he has size. So we were excited to be able to get him back on our side of the ball. And one thing before the season that you mentioned or that Coach well, Wilcox mentioned that you mentioned was the alert fatigue mm-hmm. that comes with, you know, having a game and then having it canceled and moved. How are you guys dealing with that this week and last week? You know, we're – the thing we're talking we're, – we're talking about it with our with our guys. You know, I think it goes back to the resiliency. There's um, – you know, the word is probably being overused, but we are being extremely transparent with, with the information that we have to our players. Um, what we do every weekend is a short-term um, objective of our program, but the, the trust uh, and the relationships that have been built and that will continue to be built throughout their career here, uh, I think is of the utmost importance. And I, I think you got to be very mindful of jeopardizing that um, and not being truthful and upfront um, these guys are, uh, most of these guys are all smarter than me, you know, and, and they can see through nonsense. They can see through, you know, uh, things that you're not being uh, upfront about. And I, and I don't think it, it uh, ultimately benefits anybody moving forward um, to, to make anybody better or the relationships better that are completely necessary uh, to win at a high level. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We move to David Bush from Bear Insider. Yeah, Coach. Uh, Arizona State obviously had SC on the ropes and then let it get away. Uh, what do you see in their offense? Uh, what do they do? What What worries you most about uh, what they present? Number five. Number five. Number five. Number five. <laughs> um, Jaden does a. Uh, he's an excellent player. Uh, you know, and and I think they've they've uh, done some things with him um, development wise. Uh, you know, obviously running with the football um, gave SC some some fits. Uh, you know, uh, they did a nice job of throwing the ball up. You know, they had some some forced pass interference calls that I thought were uh, were big in the game as well. Um, and, you know, and then going back, you know, they're they're challenging to prepare for. Um, a lot of moving parts, um, shifts and motions, and they do a really nice job of of utilizing multiple. Uh, personnel groupings. Okay, thanks. Hey guys, if there are further questions, um, go ahead and let me know in the chat if you do have anything else. Okay, seeing no further questions, thanks for your time, guys. We'll uh, send you out a schedule for uh, post-practice. Thanks. See you. Y'all stay safe. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.